why is thinking about education as a science rather than just education studies mm -hmm. uh, in, an important way to position the school? Well, you know, the f all of our fields of study have evolved very dramatically um, since, say, 1970. Um, we know that the biological sciences and now neuroscience have made great strides and we take for granted that they have done that and will continue to do that. And some years ago, kind of around the time I went to Penn State, um, a number of people in the study of education um, decided that if we were going to spend a lot of money on educational programs, which is what we do, for example, Head Start is $10 billion a year. Um, many of these programs are very expensive. The, the total budget, including all state and local as well as federal spending for education, is about the same as the U.S. military budget. So we're spending a lot of money on education, and of course the future of the country depends upon the education of its citizens. And yet we haven't taken the approach of it should be a science, because science produces the best evidence and the most progress. And so these people who tended to be much like the people I had known in Texas, people who worked on public policy, they had actually started an organization called the Society for Research on Educational Effectiveness, which was a whole new subgroup within the field of education researchers. And they tended to be statistical, quantitative, evidence-based. And um, when they did this, around the same time, the year 2000, um, actually when President Bush was elected, um, he and the people working for him decided to move in this direction. I think they were influenced in their own way by other researchers. And so they changed the U.S. Department of Education in order to focus it more on the kind of issues that the biomedical sciences, the, the issues and the methods that the biomedical sciences routinely use. Um, and the name for that most commonly is clinical trials. So if you're going to put a vaccine out there, you don't do that without, you're going to spend a lot of money, you're going to risk a lot of people's health. You don't do that without clinical trials, a true experiment, which is the bottom line of science. And there had been, as, as, I, as I had learned when I was at that consulting company, um, we had been doing social experiments since around the late 60s, 19, early 70s, but not with the uh, thoroughness and the completeness with which um, the biomedical sciences and other sciences did experiments. And so, um, the U.S. Department of Education set up a new part of itself called the Institute of Education Sciences, IES. And the U.S. Department of Education funds a lot of the research in education, gives out most of the grants in education, and this became the entity that gave out grants and it gave out grants only focused on interventions or policies or programs to improve education. And it gave them out in a format that said, we understand that when you start doing a study, you may not be able to do an experiment, but as you learn more things, you may get to the point that you have a program or intervention that you really think works, like people who have a vaccine that they think works. At that point, we want you to do a real experiment. We want you to try to arrange that some students in K through 12 will get the program or policy or intervention and others just like them won't. And that you'll be able to study those students before and after and produce 
scientifically um, accurate information about um, the efficacy of that program. And this is a movement within the field of education, and it has profoundly changed education. And I believe our school is aimed to be at the forefront of that change. And of course, given my background and experiences, I support that very strongly. That's great.